Today, all films make use of special effects and most use elements of performance capture to digitally create characters and bring them to life. Tim Doubleday has been working in performance capture for over 12 years. During this time, he has worked on many exciting projects, from music videos and blockbuster feature films to groundbreaking video games. He has seen incredible developments in the industry over the last decade. But however much the cameras and computers improve, the basic process of trying to capture an actor's movements and translate these into an expressive digital character remains the same. And it's this process and its incredible results that Tim has always loved. So I got into the performance capture industry because I had a real passion in video games and in films. So from an early age, I always used to play video games, whether it be a Nintendo, or later years, I moved on to personal computers, PC gaming. I did a degree in animation at Bournemouth University, and there we studied not only animation, but also the more technical side of animation. Um, at the time, motion capture wasn't really a thing, so it was more about studying programming and studying art and animation together. With his degree in animation and his love of video games, getting a job in the performance capture industry was a dream come true for Tim. So I really enjoy this field because it's kind of really... It's always changing. The technology is always moving. So it moves really quickly and you always kind of have to keep up and there's always new things to learn. Today, with the video games market booming around the world, the demand for high quantities of performance capture content is increasing all the time. So for a video game, maybe it might last 20 hours or even maybe 50 hours, whereas a film will only be two hours. And maybe within that two hours, it'll only be, I don't know, say 20 minutes of actual performance capture visible on screen. So performance capture is becoming a lot more common now in video games and in films especially. So as the demand's been there, the technology's improved and the costs come down as well. Modern performance capture technology is so good that sometimes we have to remind ourselves that many of the characters we see on our cinema and video game screens aren't real at all. While the end results look incredibly realistic, the beginning of the process of creating them is less impressive and even a little comical. Today, Tim will be capturing some movements of Mike's body for the development of a computer game. Collecting the movements of a performer's body is also known as motion capture. And it's just one part of performance capture. The process starts in the studio full of special infrared cameras, which are all linked to a central computer. Because the cameras are recording movement in a 3D space, Tim's first job is to make sure that the computer understands exactly where each camera is. This is called system calibration. It is done using a strange T-shaped stick with five bright red lights. The stick is waved in front of the cameras. Each camera records the movement of the lights and the computer collects that information. Tim watches this on his computer screen. Recording. When the system has collected enough data, the camera light turns green. 
When all the camera lights are green, the system is ready. Mike puts on a skin-tight black suit. And then he has to show the cameras and computer what his body looks like. So he needs to stretch and bend in all directions in front of the cameras while the computer collects lots of information about how his body moves. This is called subject calibration. Now that the computer understands where the cameras are and what Mike's body looks like, the next stage can begin. Tim adds reflective markers to all the important points of Mike's body. Every joint that moves. It's important that the suit is very tight because they're really trying to capture the movement of the skeleton, not the skin. So they don't want the markers to move from the joints. Once Mike is covered in markers, they are ready to start recording his movement. You just turn your arms upwards. The cameras capture information from each of the markers as Mike moves and the computer processes it all. The movements create the digital character on screen and the data is recorded for use in the development of the computer game. Recording the physical movements of a person in a studio is only one stage in the performance capture process. Away from the cameras and the lights, behind the scenes, more time-consuming work begins. The computer programs that Tim works with are incredibly powerful. They process and translate all the data captured in the studio to create a moving digital skeleton. But often, the cameras haven't recorded all the markers. Or maybe one has fallen off the suit, so the computer doesn't have all the data it needs and the skeleton doesn't move correctly. So, the first thing Tim does is to check and add any missing data himself. This can take a long time, and it is especially difficult when there's more than one person in the scene. When all the data is correct and the skeletons are moving perfectly, Tim can cover them with a computer-generated skin and they start to look more like bodies. From here, the work of computer technicians and animators will turn them into all kinds of characters and creatures in the world of the computer game or film. Of course, there are limits to creating digital characters using performance capture. You can have the most powerful computer in the world but you are still limited by how the human body can move. However, the skill of many of the performers behind the digital characters is amazing. Often, they can move and bend themselves in unbelievable ways. And it's a physically demanding job, especially when they are working on developing characters for video games. Performers have to repeat the same actions again and again in slightly different ways so that the video game players have lots of different options. A character might cross a river or they might fall in the river. The performer has to do both. So an actor's performance is everything to us, really. The technology can only take us so far. 
It's really down to the performance of the actors to carry the scene and to carry the performance across. So, for example, you might have somebody walking across the stage and they might just do a normal average walk, whereas if someone's really put some life into that walk, it's going to be a lot more appealing. So in terms of the technology, we really like to take a step back and let the actors come through and deliver their performance as naturally and kind of in a most natural way possible. With his years of experience in the industry, Tim knows better than anyone that it is the performers, not technology, that are really the heart of performance capture.